Have you ever spent ages learning a lick, but then it never seems to come out in your playing when you're improvising? Or if you do play it in a solo, it just sounds really forced. Well, luckily, there's a few things we can do when we're practicing to avoid this problem and avoid wasting our precious practice time. Now, before we get into this, we do need to understand why just learning how to play cool sounding licks can often cause this problem. And in my experience, it's normally down to two simple reasons. Not having the lick internalized enough to be able to actually hear it in our heads and not being comfortable enough with the lick to use it as a longer phrase or section without it sounding really forced and out of place. If you can't hear it, then when you're improvising and hopefully playing all these spontaneous or semi-spontaneous ideas, there's no chance of it popping into your head and therefore no chance of you playing that lick. Unless, of course, you decide to force it in there, but that never sounds good. Him again. And if you struggle to use the lick as part of a phrase or section without it sounding forced, well, when each idea is hopefully flowing into the next one, you're unlikely to subconsciously choose to play something that sounds forced, right? So once you've found a lick or a piece of language you want to learn, make sure you know what harmony it works over and then practice singing that lick. Now this is without a doubt the quickest way to getting it internalized, getting it in our head, in our ears, and therefore helping us to hear it when we're improvising. Now, if you're not a confident singer, don't worry. You do not need to be the next Sinatra or the next Ella Fitzgerald to do this. Just really focus on hitting the correct pitches. Now it's time to work it out on your instrument. Try taking it through multiple keys here if you can, because that will really help get that sound cemented in your ears and underneath your fingers. And here is the big thing that so many people miss. Once you can play that lick, you need to practice inserting it into your solos. So play through a few choruses of a jazz standard or a looped chord progression, but only play that lick. And make sure you're playing it at every single opportunity. So if it's a 2-5 lick, make sure you play it over every single 2-5 progression. And once that's comfortable, start improvising in those gaps that you've left, but make sure you keep playing that lick in all the same places you were before. And now try to be a bit freer with it. So improvise as you normally would, but try to hit that lick on the right harmony whenever it feels natural and kind of like it fits in with what you've just played. You don't need to force it in everywhere. Now, if after going through all of these steps, that lick still sounds a little bit forced, try to work out why. There might be a really simple fix. So let's say it's a really dirty blues lick you're working on, and the rest of your improvisation is a bit more bop oriented. Well, that lick is gonna really stand out. So try adding in a bit more blues based language dotted throughout your solo to just smoothen that transition. Or if 
it's a double time bop lick, but there aren't really any other moments of double time at all in your improvisations, add a few more in to smoothen out that transition. Now there's loads of different ways you can do things like this to help a lick sound a bit more natural. Obviously the exact approach is going to depend on the individual lick and how you currently sound as an improviser, but hopefully you can see how the thought process works here. By now, that lick should be feeling pretty secure, and it may already be turning up in some of your solos. But there's one more thing we can do to really help cement it in our heads, ears, and under our fingers. This time, each time you play it, change it a little bit. You might change some of the notes or the rhythm, anything to stop it being the original lick and to make it yours. That is what's going to make it stick with you. Depending on the length and the complexity of the lick, it might take you a bit of time to get through this whole process. But once you have, that lick is going to appear in your playing without you even trying. Now if you want to know how we can break down individual licks to learn as much from them as possible, check out this video where I go through that whole process with a killer Cannibal Adley lick. I'll see you there.